Hey guys, how are you all? Today we'll be covering sufficiency, which is one of the most important criteria for a good estimator. I understand that all of us have already done estimators of binomial, Poisson, normal, all of these distributions. So let's level up a bit. So after the completion of any experiment, the job of a statistician is to interpret the data she has collected and to draw some statistically valid conclusions about the population under investigation. In addition to being costly, the raw data by themselves are not suitable for this purpose. Therefore, a statistician would like to condense the data by computing some statistics from them, such that no loss of information is observed in doing so. Let's consider a quick example. Suppose we have taken n observations from normal mu, comma 1 population, where mu is unknown. I transform x1, x2, x1 to y1, y2, yn, where it is an orthogonal transformation, so that y1 follows normal distribution with mean under root n into mu and standard deviation 1, and, and y2, y3, yn follow normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation 1, such that y1, y2, yn are independent. To estimate mu, we can either use the observed values of x1, x2, xn or simply the observed value of y1 equals to under root of n into x bar. The random variables y2, y3 and so on till yn provide no information about mu. Clearly, y1 is preferable since we do not need to keep a record of all the observations and any analysis of the data based on y1 is just as effective as any analysis that could be based on x size. Now, here is an important remark. The outcome x1, x2, x1 is always a sufficient statistic. If t is sufficient for theta, then we need to concentrate only on t since it incorporates all the information that the sample has about theta. Now, here's an important definition. An estimator is said to be sufficient for a parameter if it contains all the information in the sample regarding the parameter and if t is an estimator of a parameter theta based on a sample x1, x2, xn of size n from the population with density fx theta such that the conditional distribution of x given t does not depend on theta or is independent of theta, then t is a sufficient statistic. In example, we saw that the statistic y1 is sufficient for mu by constructing y2, y3, yn as independently and identically distributed normal 0, 1 variates that are independent of y1. Hence, the conditional distribution of y2, y3, yn given y1 equals to under root of nx bar is same as unconditional distribution of y2, y3, yn. Since this distribution is independent of mu, the conditional distribution of y1, y2, yn and hence x1, x2, xn given y1 equals to y1 is also independent of mu. Hence, y1 is sufficient. Let's consider a very interesting example real quick. Now, suppose x1 and x2 belong to Poisson distribution with parameter lambda. Now, we have to find a sufficient estimator and we have to check whether x1 plus x2 is sufficient for lambda or not. We can see that probability of x1 equals to x1, x2 equals to x2 given x1 plus x2 equals to t is given as this. So, I simply solve it now. Now, this conditional probability comes out to be independent of lambda. Hence, x1 plus x2 is a sufficient estimator for lambda. Taking another example, where x1 and x2 belong to Poisson lambda, we have to check if x1 plus 2x2 is sufficient for lambda or not. Here, I am solving it.
as we can see that it doesn't come out to be independent of lambda hence we can say that not every statistic is sufficient now the problem with the previous definition is it's not constructive we need to first guess an estimator and then check whether it is sufficient or not which is quite time consuming so let's define a criteria for determining a sufficient statistic we study the famous factorization criteria which states that the necessary and sufficient condition for an estimator t to be sufficient for theta is let x1 x2 xn be discrete random variables with probability mass function p theta theta belongs to theta h then t is sufficient for theta if and only if we can write p theta as a multiple of h theta and g theta where h theta is a non negative function of x1 x2 xn only and g theta is a non negative non constant function of theta and t only the statistic t and parameter theta may be multi dimensional now here are a few important remarks theorem 1 holds for continuous as well as discrete case it also holds if theta is a vector and t is a multiple random variable then we say that t is jointly sufficient for theta so if theta is scalar t may be multi dimensional if theta and t are of same dimension and if t is sufficient for theta it does not follow that the j component of t is sufficient for j component of theta t is a sufficient statistic for theta any one to one function of t is also sufficient however it does not follow that every function of a statistic is itself sufficient for example in sampling from a normal population x bar is sufficient for mean mu but x bar square Here is a reminder that x bar is sufficient for mu square now here are a few important remarks if t is sufficient for theta belonging to a set then t is also sufficient for a subset of that set here it's important to note that by a function independent of theta we not only mean that it doesn't contain theta it also means that the domain of the function doesn't contain theta for example a uniform distribution is not independent of theta and it's important to note that the most general form of distributions that admit sufficient statistics is koopman form that is defined as and it is also known as the famous exponential distribution family now let's start doing some really interesting questions together there's not much to do when all i can is thinking about you not doing well don't know where you are cuz you're not here It's been way too long If I could lay down beside you I would, I would When nothing really matters That's all I want to do I hope that you are safe And that I will see you soon If I could lay down beside you I would, I would Talk on the 
phone every night. Love to hear your voice. Not sleeping well, and I know that you're right, but you should know it. You've been gone for way too long now. If I can lay down beside you, I would. Beside you, I would, I would. When nothing really matters, that's all I wanna do. I hope that you're safe and that I will see you soon. If I can lay down beside you, I would, I would. If I can lay down beside you, I would. Spoken with no strings tying you to me. I'm happy in your company with no emotion, 'cause my love deserves to be free. I never wanna look at a house in the garden. I never wanna lock you down. I know you're not mine. It's just my turn, but we can still have fun for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do. Please make sure to subscribe so that I know I'm walking in the right direction. Thank you.